Tell me about the fish, Jeff. Tell me about the fish. So I was surfing Sunset Cliffs a lot, actually. I had moved to uh, Sunset Cliffs, Ocean Beach. And Stevie Liss was one of the uh, local kids. He was riding a kneeboard that had a split tail and two fins. And he was going faster than anybody around. He could take off on a wave, do two or three pump turns really high on, high on the wall, and do full wrap cutbacks, climb up over the foam ball, drop back in, do a bottom turn, and then repeat, rinse and repeat. Yeah. But one of the things that stood out in my mind was one day I was, I was, I think I was walking out, but I looked back and I saw Stevie take off on a wave, you know, and he was just hauling ass and then he pulled out, like pulled out and went on, you know, the back of the wave in the flat. And next thing you know, he turns on the flat behind the wave and drops back in. Holy shit. <laughs> that, that is carrying some speed. So, um, I was riding at that time, probably a, a 611 Hawaiian style gun that was 18 and a half inches wide. And um, one day on the beach, just sitting around, I had an idea. Why not try Stevie's kneeboard? Because I remember in Hawaii, when I was a kid growing up, uh, starting to surf, pipe boarding actually, there was a guy named Bell Ching, no relation, at the wall in Waikiki, Kuhiu Beach. And he was standing on his pipe board, it was probably like a four and a half foot pipe board with his fins, and actually doing turns, climbing and dropping and cutting back. And this was back in, you know, 62, 63, where guys would be riding longboards, but they would just be doing hood ornament poses, you know, they'd yeah. take off and get into a trim and just <laughs> stand there <laughs> and not do much. So um, I took Stevie's board, I got my wetsuit on, I came up to about here, swam it out, and the first wave I took off on, it was like riding on, riding on my feet because it was so loose. And, you know, you would do turns and it would just, it was like effortless. That, that's the best description I can describe riding the fish for the first time. It's like riding on your feet. You didn't have a surfboard. You just said, I wanted to go there and then <laughs> went there. So, after that, I borrowed his kneeboard every single time he was in on the beach. And this lasted for about two or three weeks. He got tired of it. <laughs> and he made me a 5'5 five five fish, which kind of became the standard. Um, after I got my fish, everybody started riding them locally. What was the, what was kind of the, the vibe when you first started paddling out on these things next to these guys on these big logs I and mean, were guys kind of crooked eye on you did they well, try to back figure then, out what the hell were you were doing single fence and uh where i surfed at the cliffs everybody knew me so they they were just amazed and everybody started getting fishes after like that. immediately yeah and it only stayed in that area because uh well the cliffs it was kind of like locals only so it didn't venture out much. Didn't venture out. We we used to go to surf other spots, but mostly uh, South Mission Jetty on South Wind Days. And we'd surf Big Rock because it was, you know, really close to Pipeline. Yeah. And the knee border just killed it at Big Rock. You know, also known as Lobster Lounge or the Moids. <laughs> 
So I started riding them probably the winter of 69 to 70. And then by the time the world contest came in 72, you know, everybody I know is riding fishes and um, the surf for the world contest was like two foot grovelly, little. grovelly slop. And uh, the two people who were in the finals, Jimmy Blears and David Nueva, they both rode fishes. Uh, Jimmy borrowed one from a local shaper and Nueva had his own fish. And I watched the finals and I thought, uh, I thought that Nueva won it because he was actually, you know, doing a lot more turns. Well, Jimmy Blairs was getting, uh, you know, just more trimmed out and doing like cheater fives, uh, kind of upright cheater fives uh, on his fish, but he was cruising, you know, he was gliding and getting really long rides. And years later when I, I, uh, I didn't know Jimmy back then, but years later in Hawaii, Jimmy used to show up uh, the Kaiser's parking lot and we talked about the fish a lot. Yeah, that's so rad. Yeah. So what do you think of the evolution of seeing how fish have gone from when he started messing with them in the late sixties to how they've, they've re, they're reassurgence now? Well, I think it's the best hot dogging board you could ever ride. It's the most fun. Um, you know, it's good in, in the surf up to like five or six feet. I've actually surfed it in Hawaii. And a lot bigger surf, uh, surfed it at, you know, six to eight foot line of kale, really walled up and it worked great. But the only problem was you couldn't paddle in the waves because they were so short, short. I was riding a 5'10 at that time. So, to take off, you would paddle up the face of the wave and then halfway up, turn around, <laughs> stick your tail in and do a no hands takeoff. Super late. Yeah, but <laughs> it, they flew. And the other place that I surfed it that was kind of gnarly was Kalihiwai on um, Kauai, which is a, a gnarly ass wave. And it was the same thing couldn't, couldn't uh, paddle into them. You had to do no hands takeoffs. Nice. What do you think now that, that you haven't surfed in so long and all you do is snowboard now on some of the snowboard designs that are swallow tailed and fish S, do you feel the same uh, skatiness with that tail on some of those Jones boards you've been surfing? Well, um, I, I think all of those swallow tail type boards sort of emulate you know how a fish rides but surfing a wave and surfing snow surfing two different things totally huh? yeah yeah that's so cool i think it's rad that um that we met snowboarding and you have a surf history and i have a snowboard history and i <laughs> i'm now, now venturing the down the surf <laughs> so it's really cool to get stories and questions and tech talk from you and stuff about it because I've gravitated towards a fish and uh, it you know I surfed my first traditional twin fish a buddy of mine named Andy um, shaped and the very first time I dropped in on it I carved it right out from underneath myself it was you know like what? being on the loosest trucks ever and, most, most but people. now it's like yeah dude the thing is just so fun and fast and and like real skatey and snappy and and uh i'm actually anxious to get home because i have one when people now. first tried riding a fish most of the time it was the same thing they tried to do a turn and it would squirt <laughs> out from under them <laughs> flat onto my back yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so rad <laughs> It, we used to call them um, bars of soap or like pumpkin seeds where you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, so rad though. <laughs> well, thanks for story time. Yeah, you can show it to your friends. Oh yeah, I appreciate you talking story with me.